Hi everyone, and thank you very much. As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by um, one of these. It's a long way away from the laptop bar now, let me tell you. Uh, although you still need one. Click here when live for stream info, view accounts and more. I don't think I need to bother with that. So uh, I've actually got a new setup and I'll tell you about that in a sec, but welcome to everybody. And it's really good to have you here for a Saturday morning. It's uh, one minute past nine and I'm located at uh, Chip Fair Le Lay. Chip Fair Le Lay? There you go. Uh, in Panga at Turtle Beach. Now, just to give you a, a bit of an idea of uh, why it sort of sounds and looks a little bit different, I'm actually not using uh, my usual uh, blue Yeti mic, that great big black thing. Uh, I'm just using the microphone on the new Mac that I've bought. I think I've got a photo here for you, uh, just learning how to use all this. So this is the system I've got now. And uh, I've got this new uh, Mac, and it's a, a MacBook Air, and it's uh, an M2, because the M3 isn't available here in Thailand yet. It's in a, uh, it's called Midnight, the color. It's a very, very dark blue, and uh, you can certainly see your finger marks on it, but it's a pretty sexy looking machine. And uh, I've got the iPad feeding information into it, like uh, this photo, for example. So uh, I can switch between uh, myself and, uh, and the computer. So uh, yeah, I'm actually using the camera on the Mac and I'm using the mic on the Mac today. So the sound quality probably isn't quite as good because I'm, well, further away from the mic than I usually am. But I am going to get a, um, a, a small microphone, a smaller one. The, uh, the Blue Yeti, uh, the big black one, I've had that for about 10 years. And I think the cable's starting to get a bit wonky. It gets sh shoved into my bag and uh, yeah, I, I think it's probably uh, at the end of its days. Anyway, um, here we are and it's, um, it it's really good to have you with us and I'm sorry for last week. Uh, it actually has been a very, very, very busy week. But as you can see from, uh, from the photo, we've got our street back here in Turtle Beach. Now it's been almost three weeks, so we had a week set up time, actually it was more like 10 days. We had the 10 days of the festival, and then here we are a week after the end of the festival, the Turtle Festival in Time Mung, and um, they're still cleaning up. The day after the festival finished, which was this Monday morning, last m Monday morning, the, the smell and the mess was <laughs> just, Horrendous, all the restaurants closed because nobody had come here. Uh, it was just, uh, that, yeah, it needed a really, really big cleanup. So that's been happening. So, um, okay, uh, we've got Frank on a 50 inch flat screen TV and he says it sounds and looks good. So this is the, uh, the actual camera, uh, you know, the webcam camera on the, uh, the Mac. So I haven't connected anything else. The thing about this MacBook is it's only got two inputs. My old Mac had four. So uh, yeah, I'm sort of working a much lighter unit. The actual Mac is, I think it's about 17,000 times faster than my old one. That might be an exaggeration. Or it's at least three or four times faster, but that's what happens over six years. Things change and it's only about, you know, it's very, very thin. Nice unit, I'm in love. It's love and it lets me touch it, so that's good. So, um, really good to have you with us, and we've got a few things to discuss. We've got a meeting of three Prime Ministers in Thailand, the current Prime Minister a, and two former Prime Ministers. I think you might know who one of those is, so we'll cover that. And also, uh, a, a question uh, about which is the longest beach in Thailand. I'm gonna make a claim today that nobody else seems to have made. So uh, get your Google Maps out and see if you can uh, join in. But uh, what is the longest beach in Thailand? Uh, now, who we got here? I can sort of read all these out. The screen's pretty close to me here. So many people online, and it's really good to see you all. If I start reading you all out, uh, I'll be here for an hour. But uh, we've got hands, uh, reread. Uh, Scott D from Chicago. I think there's daylight savings now in the US so you're one hour later I don't know uh, we don't do daylight savings here in Thailand so it's the same time right throughout the year 
which is good because um, yeah, the, the cows don't get upset and the curtains don't fade with that extra hour of uh, sunlight as people used to worry about in Australia. It used to be a great though in uh, the Melbourne summers that uh, we would ha have light uh, until around about 9 p.m. So those long summer nights were very, very enjoyable, uh, but uh, no more. So I'm the only person here at uh, Chip Fair Lele. They've been closed for four days because they'd had enough of the festival and were happy to see it cleaned up at their back. And so I thought I'd pop in because uh, they're always very hospitable here. I'm going to have another drink out of my glass of water, which is a long way away, and I'll lean back. Not going to pay for another Mac, I can tell you that. So uh, people having a conversation, looks like Reed Reed is leaving the US and moving to the Philippines. It's the big discussion in the comments section. Lang F. Tan, thank God no daylight savings in Western Australia. Yeah, I think Australian states, they all do it differently, which of course complicates things um, when one state changes, but in another, another doesn't, particularly when they do like network TV, which is meant to go around the country and it's a different, oh, anyway. Uh, good morning, Tim, from David Hodgson. Good to have you with us, Stephen Casper. Uh, no daylight savings in Arizona. We get enough sun here. Yeah, so a daylight savings, of course, adds an extra hour of sunshine every day and it you know, fades the curtains. Uh, John Williams has a comment. Uh, Hi, Tim. I love all your shows. Just a suggestion. When promoting your beach houses, would it not be a good idea to actually let people know when these festivals are? When promoting your beach houses... Uh, well, I, th I think we did promote the Turtle Festival in advance. Oh, I, um, well, yes, I suppose some people, when they arrived, they were surprised that there was a festival on and they didn't like it. Um, the, the beach houses are... Well, that dog making it very clear that he's unhappy to share the road with anybody else. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's incumbent on anybody visiting anywhere that they um, do a bit of homework. It's pretty well known, and we certainly told everybody that this Turtle Festival was happening. But uh, fair enough comment, John. I uh, appreciate that. Vince Majestic. Yeah, I remember the oldies complaining about fading curtains due to daylight savings. Rock trip on this, the longest beach in Thailand. Here we go is Bang Krut Beach, located in the province of Pratchop, Kirikan in southern Thailand. It's 12 kilometres. Rock trip on this, I'm going to be bringing up exactly what you read, because uh, that's what I found when I typed it in as well. Vernon Needham's also jumped into Google and says, Bang Krut Beach in Pratchop, Kirikan is the longest. I'm going to challenge that. Uh, hi from Hua Hin, says Edward Robb. Unsized media says I hate daylight savings time. So let's go to this issue of the longest beach in Thailand. And uh, we will start with uh, what those people um, have just been reading, getting used to pressing all the right buttons here. There we go. Uh, Cora, and the question was, what is the longest beach in Thailand? And Chrisia said the longest beach in Thailand, as I said, it's, it's already, uh, found by some of the uh, the people online is Bangkrut Beach located in the province of Prachyop Kirikan 12 kilometers it's a long sandy beach with clear blue water and stunning views of the Gulf of Thailand the beach is known for its quiet and peaceful atmosphere making it a perfect spot then Dave chimed in and said no the longest beach in Thailand is the 13 kilometer long Mai Cow Beach which is in northern Phuket located in, oh there we are, the northern part of Phuket Island and it's situated uh, within the Sirinat National Park. Now interestingly uh, if you have a look at a map, and we will look at a few maps in a moment, that Maikau Beach at the north end of Phuket, it extends right up to the, we'll do it this way, to the very top of Phuket and then once you get over that uh, what 200 metres of water where the bridge uh, crosses into the mainland it continues just that long stretch of beach and I'm going to claim that that long stretch of beach and I'm right in the middle of it here in Turtle Beach is in fact the longest beach in Thailand. Let's uh, have a look. 
This is the stretch that I'm claiming is, oh hang on, I better press that button. This is the stretch I'm claiming is the longest beach in Thailand and it goes just south of Khao Lak and then all the way down through the Lampi uh, National Park through Thai Mung and then uh, south to Kok Loi and then down to Natai Beach. So it's that stretch of beach. So exactly, uh, that, that sort of gives you a bit more perspective. So you can see I'm up there in Panga, the blue dot, that's where I am in Tai Mung, and you can see that long stretch of beach, and it stretches down into Phuket as well. So we've got the measuring stick out, here we go, and uh, we're measuring all the way from the top of that beach, here we go, down south, past Tai Mung, and all the way down to Natai Beach, before we get to that headland, and uh, that is some 34 kilometers. So 34 kilometers is a lot longer than those other beaches that were claiming to be the longest beach. But uh, okay, I will admit to one thing, because we're talking about the longest stretch of unbroken beach. So I will admit, there is right in the middle of that stretch, there is a, a little, uh, it's, what do you call that, a sort of a breakwater? And sometimes it's open and sometimes it's not, depending on the tides, depending on the shifting sands. But uh, when this Google photo was taken, it was obviously open. And uh, it's just a, an area where the, the tide goes in and out into that estuary. But even if you count that, uh, from the, the top of the beach down to there, that is 18.5 kilometres which still makes that the longest stretch of unbroken beach in Thailand. Do I have anything more to say about that? No. So, challenge me. What have I done wrong here? That seems to me to be the longest stretch of beach in Thailand, and I think Cora has got it wrong. What do you think? I've got the evidence here. Um, so, a bit of photographic evidence. Here we go. This is actually from the Thai Mueang Beach looking north, and that's uh, sort of looking up to the top of a national park. And uh, this is just at sunset last night. Uh, looking out to sea, a very pleasant sunset as usual. And then you look all the way down south and you can see it's stretching down southwards towards Phuket. And that would be that uh, headland down at Natai Beach. Some, uh, well at that stage, that's about 15 kilometres away. So there you go, that's what I'm uh, claiming, that in fact the longest beach in Thailand is not in Prachuap Kiri Khan, it is in fact in Panga Bay, in Panga, on the Andaman Sea. So does anybody care about what I've just been talking about? Ree Reed says, uh, I... Where are we? I might not know what the longest beach is in Thailand, but I'm pretty sure I know who the biggest bitch is. I see, I get it. Uh, Jonas says the longest beach in Thailand is actually Hat Bang Sak Beach, located in Panga Province. <coughs> it stretches for approximately 13 kilometres. Hat Bang Sak. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to go to um, Hat Bang Sak. Uh, Hat Bang Sak. Check this out. Um, so we're going to stretch, uh, here we go, so we'll go to the maps and we'll uh, have a little look here. Uh, Hat Bang Sak, uh, that doesn't look, um, well it's not 18 kilometres or 34 kilometres which I've already proved is the beach running past here in Turtle Beach. So uh, I'm not really sure what the claim is here. Where is this? Uh, this is up at uh, this is up at Kaolak. So it doesn't look like it's 13 kilometres on that map anyway. Uh, and that's just north of um, this stretch here, which I'm claiming is, and you can see visually, that is a much longer beach than that. So I'm claiming that you might in fact not be correct. Um, so what else have we got here, uh, talking about the beach? Pepe says the longest beach is when you feel like a beer and the bar is just at the end of the beach. Fair comment. Tim, you had a festival before New Year that nobody knew anything about. Uh, have a nice peaceful weekend. Looking forward to grumpy old men tomorrow. 
Uh, yes, we did. We had a festival uh, right at, in New Year. Nobody sort of knew that it was coming. It arrived and we were all surprised. The locals didn't know what to do. Um, anyway, I don't think that will be happening again. Question uh, asks John S. in Melbourne. Sound of a coffee in the background. You probably hear it more on this mic than the old one. How was the high season in Taimung? Do you find more tourists in Turtle Beach? Uh, this is my first high season in uh, Turtle Beach. So, um, look, it was definitely busier, certainly during the festival. Mostly local people, but a few more uh, foreign around, a few more foreigners. But, I mean, today it's just back to quiet old Turtle Beach. There's hardly anybody here. Uh, there were a few cyclists a bit earlier. We might have some more cyclists later. Um, but we get that pretty much all the way through the year. But, uh, no, it's back to quiet old sleepy Turtle Beach. Um, my rentals have done very well over the past couple of months. Uh, February, February was... Are totally booked out. I think I had one or two days in each of the uh, beach houses. Ford bookings are mm, a bit soft, I suppose, but I imagine that is going to happen during the uh, the low season. By the way, if you are interested in, got three beach houses now: got Bonneville, Coral Cottage, and Bamboo Beach House, and uh, they're all available for rental. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to go and have a look at the photos and uh, decide if you'd like to have a very quiet uh, day too, maybe even up to a week. Bring some books. At Bamboo Beach House we've got a turntable with, uh, I think we've got a collection of about 10 LPs now. And uh, so you can have a bit of a play and a bit of retro life uh, listening to them as well. So I, I, I don't know if, the, I think Steve has said that this year's high season was busier. He was here for the other season, but everywhere in Thailand has been busier this high season than it was last year because of the, um, the uh, sorry, just checking a message, an important message about an arrival uh, this afternoon, the customer telling us what time they're arriving. So I can greet them and say, welcome. Like uh, Mr. Mr. Rourke, is it, on Fantasy Island? That's me. <clears throat> so, um, yes, yeah, Steve said it was busy, but uh, yeah, everywhere has been busier this year as Thailand's, well, 80% recovered from the, uh, the previous COVID numbers. Prachyob Kiri Khan is a beautiful and underrated area of Thailand, says Fun Size Media. I would have to... Uh, uh, go along with that, but only a few palm trees. Here we have um, palm trees and cassiarinas, and I don't know what those other trees are called, but they have a lot of leaves that fall down uh, because the, the leaves are, yeah, and they're, they're sort of semi deciduous. They go bright red for a couple of days, then all the leaves fall off. I don't know what they're called, um, but there's a couple out the front of our house, and you see them along this coast, but it's uh, palm trees, cassiarinas. Uh, which were a bit messy and uh, just like along here there's just uh, thousands of them it's the predominant uh, flora species so other questions uh, is turtle beach oh okay all right we'll um, do our best to try and is turtle beach good for running the whole length asked Klong Andy well look uh, it's fairly steep in uh, our locations there are flat parts at the top of the beach and then uh, once the sand uh, starts getting washed you know the high tide line it does sort of be it's quite steep so i wouldn't say that's good for running however the um there is a running track or a, a bike cycling track that runs pretty much the 10 kilometers along the beach here so a, a lot of people use that, but I know a lot of people do like running on the beach. It's not a flat beach. It does have quite a, um, a steep slope, which probably makes it uh, less conducive to, uh, to running. Perfect cool weather today in Chiang Mai, but an AQI of 198. We'll get to that a bit later too. Uh, I like long beaches where I can walk forever and not to the ends of the beach. Well, Lang F. Tan, if I'm right, we've got the longest beach in Thailand here. And all these uh, false claims in the media, including people claiming that Hat Bang Sak Beach in Khao Lak is the longest beach. No! Clearly, it's not. We've got the, uh, the longest beach here. 
I'm going to, we're going to call the Guinness Book of Records and see if they can uh, make sure they understand that. Um, oh no, the Lycra Outlaw Cyclists have arrived. Just a few of them. Uh, the longest beach stretch of beach in Australia is 194 kilometres. Yes, Australia has some very long beaches, but we're not talking about Australia, we're talking about Thailand. How wide is it? Does it touch the sides? Uh, Ralph asked, how wide is the beach? I am guessing an average width of the beach, uh, this longest beach in Thailand, is um, about 40 to 50 metres. That's a bit of a guess, but uh, I'm guessing that it's not a hugely wide beach. Uh, Tim, no calls from Lazada today. Yes, we will have calls from Lazada today. Thanks for asking. Uh, you see more Russians. Uh, there have been some Russians up here, but not a lot. How about the deepest beach? Well, that depends how far you go off from the shore, doesn't it? But here it is a fairly deep beach. Well, here come the cyclists. Oh, the collective noun, a horde of cyclists has just arrived. Five so far, six. There will be more. They travel in gangs. What have you got in the middle of your longest beaches referred to in the Journal of Hydrology as an intermittently closed and open lake or lagoon? Thank you very much. Uh, guys always arguing about length. Uh, Toby Price, I thought the new PM said he was not going to meet Taxon. I'm not surprised, mind you. Um, okay, let's uh, have a talk about that. They not only wear lycra, but they're quite loud as well. Oh, I seem to have... Uh... No, nope, you can still hear me, that's fine. Sorry. So, uh, here we go. We've had an, uh, a visit this week, a, a tourist, who has been spending the last six months, um, well, in a hospital. A prison hospital. You'd call that custody, I suppose. But uh, Taxon travelled up to Chiang Mai and Bangkok Post says that Taxon says that happiness is at home. Taxon Shinawat said on Friday night he was happy to reunite with his family in what was his first public comment since being released on parole la last month. Happiness depends on family. Happiness is at home. Happiness is getting out of jail way, way, way before your sentence is concluded. Chiang Mai is also Taxon's political home, a fact underscored by a dinner gathering on Friday night that featured three Prime Ministers. Taxon, who was the Prime Minister from 2001 to 2006-ish, depending on uh, how you count coups. His brother-in-law, Somchai Wongsawat, keeping it in the family. And uh, he led a short-lived government in 2008. And Seita Tawisin, who occupies the post at present. And here's that photo. Something, uh, oh, whoops, that uh, we notice about that photo. What happened to the neck brace that Taxon was wearing upon his release on parole and also was wearing as he was walking around, but suddenly his neck seems to be okay. And the Kalsod English Facebook page reports uh, that Prime Minister Seita Tawisin joined dinner with two former Prime Ministers, Taxon and Somchai at the Somchai residence inside Summit Green Valley Golf Course in Mare Rim District uh, up in Chiang Mai. Patongtan Chinawat, the Per Thai party leader, also came to attend. There was also the minister, uh, Tamanat Prompao, I mentioned him yesterday, and a few other uh, secretary, or du direct, secretary, du ge secretary generals of ministries. So a lot of people connected with the current government. They never make this much noise, except when I'm here. Yes, you get out too. Um, so, yeah, those people having uh, a lot of fun yesterday, probably making as much noise as these guys. But that's fine. It's a public space. They're allowed to make noise. I'm not complaining. So don't jump on me about that. So uh, a pretty historic photo, I would say, with those three prime ministers in Thailand. And Taxon looking, I suppose you could say, radiant. Um, he was also speaking tourism yesterday, the current prime minister. 
He was up in Chiang Mai. By the way, Chiang Mai yesterday was number one in the world for the worst pollution, the worst, most air polluted city in the world. Uh, but anyway, despite that, and despite Chiang Mai being a beautiful place for all but four months of the year, uh, Seta Tawi Sin is talking tourism. And the PM posted on Twitter, on sorry, X, yesterday, tourism will be the main engine driving the Thai economy. Now, in the past, it's been, um, well, car manufacturing has been the, uh, the, the thing that's been driving, mainly driving the Thai economy. And tourism, depending on the numbers that you might believe, it's distracting me, I'm sorry if it's distracting you. It, it's been, tourism's been between 10 and 20% quoted all over the place, but somewhere between 10 and 20% of the Thai GDP each year. But uh, yeah, it looks like the current Prime Minister wants tourism to be the main driver of the Thai economy. He wrote that his government will promote second tier provinces as tourism destinations, soft power, events and festivals like the Paris Fashion Show, the Paris Fashion Show in Thailand, or a Thailand Fashion Show I think he's talking about, Formula One race, that's not going to happen, better infrastructure and rules to improve the uh, travel experience of foreign visitors. Now, I think that last one, improving the travel experience for foreign visitors, is the key. Because the best way to promote tourism is to make sure that the people coming to Thailand in the first place have a great experience, tell their friends and family about it, and come back for a second, third, fourth time. If they don't have a good travel experience, they're going to write something in their social media page, have a whinge about it, and they're not going to come back. So, uh, yeah, I think making sure that tourists have the best travel experience is the best way to promote tourism in Thailand, no matter what they're doing, whether they're going for a wander down walking street in Pattaya, <clears throat> whether they're going hiking through the mountains up in northern Thailand, or whether they're lounging on a beach here in Phang A. <clears throat> By the way, the longest beach here in Thailand. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's um, worth considering how they can improve the tourist experience. Arrival, more people at immigration, making the visa process um, allowing for longer visas or uh, more countries visa exempt. Uh, that arrival experience of the taxis. Now, if you arrive at Don Muang or if you drive at Suwanapum, getting a taxi is a, usually, especially at uh, Don Muang, is an excellent experience. It's orderly and they're all well dressed and the taxis are in good condition and they use their meter most of the time. But you go to a place like Phuket and the arrival experience is not quite as good. The taxi mafia don't provide a good experience and it's a hack and you get charged way over what you should be paying and um, the meters don't work. They have set prices. And those set prices over the past couple of months have gone up. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit um, like they, they need to get more consistency, I think, in that tourism experience. Because if somebody complains about a bad taxi experience in Phuket, do you want that to reflect on the rest of Thailand? Well, no. So uh, yeah, standardizing a lot of these tourism experiences, arrivals at airports, uh, public transportation, things like that, I think would be a good start. Then again, that chaos that we have, the organised chaos here in Thailand, is one of the things we really like about the place. So um, maybe we don't want to change it too much. But it looks like the Prime Minister is certainly trying to make Thailand um, a much more tourist-friendly place. It's one of the topics that he brings up consistently. He's been to Phuket three times. Uh, so they're sort of saying that that island is a key to, uh, to driving uh, Thai tourism in the future. And it's probably to the detriment of Phuket, it'll just get more tourists, but it might get some much needed money spent on infrastructure to make getting around the island much easier and more pleasant than it is at the moment. But there's no doubt that uh, that is, uh, well apart from Bangkok, the 
key driver of tourism here in Thailand at the moment. Now, the Prime Minister and the two former Prime Ministers were in Chiang Mai yesterday, and yesterday Chiang Mai had the worst air pollution in the world. It was the city with the worst pollution in the world. What's the situation today? Well, again, Chiang Mai has scored number one spot with what you could only describe as hazardous uh, PM 2.5 levels, reaching up to 224, it's up in the purple, and there's a circle on the map around uh, northern Thailand with Chiang Mai somewhere in the middle. But uh, you can see that air, that uh, bad, poor air quality stretches right into northern Myanmar and also into northern Laos. Uh, but yeah, choking air quality as uh, Chiang Mai and the people in Ch Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai and uh, Lampun and other locations up there in northern Thailand are certainly suffering. Now, uh, if we go to northeastern Thailand, looking, uh, well, pretty good at the moment. Places like Konkan, uh, up uh, around, I'm trying to remember the, uh, the, the location just before Vientiane, up on the Thai border. I've been there, Loi, 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 it's right up there on the border. I've been there. And uh, Ubon Ratchatani, Bangkok not looking too bad, and you head further south and the air quality improves. It's such that well, clear blue skies here and fresh air. <coughs> no, it's good fresh air here today and uh, good to see. I'll get to uh, some other stories a bit later, but we'll go to your comments, uh, what people are saying about all that stuff we've been talking about. I thought the new PM uh, said he was not going to meet Taxon. Oh, I think he uh, would do that one. 80% recovery, says Vince is pretty good, but I've heard many say that Phuket is busier than pre-COVID days. Yeah, uh, the, the, it, the recovery is lumpy. Phuket seems to, uh, in some locations, just be out of control at the moment. And I think uh, a lot of the focus is still on Patong, but a lot of it's moved up to Bang Tao and Cheung Tlai, and that area over the past well, two years really, has just gone insane. You go down to the southern part of the island and around Rawai, sometimes very, very busy as well. Now, uh, people living up in Pattaya, uh, what's the recovery been like there? Um, have you got 80% return of the tourism numbers compared to 2019? Or is it better than back in 2019? Uh, I know we've got different types of tourists coming to Thailand now. I mean, I think the, the top five uh, include uh, Malaysians, uh, Russians, uh, Chinese, of course, back again. Um, who else is up there? Uh, Singaporeans. Uh, a lot of those are like shorter haul market, the longer haul market, the Americans, the Europeans, the, uh, the UK. The, we're seeing less of them. No, sorry. We're seeing about the same numbers of those but they're being overshadowed by some of these new developing market. Oh, Indians, of course. Many people coming from uh, India as they've really started to increase the number of flights from uh, major Indian cities. Heard from the 1420 YouTube video in Russia. Long F10, I have no idea what you're talking about, sorry. Um, I like big beaches, I cannot lie, says Hans. Oh, we've got a few um, super chats that I'd like to acknowledge. Uh, Eileen, Eileen Morris Duke, thank you very, very much for your extreme generosity. Much, much appreciated, Eileen. Um, says, I'm happy to have the live chats back. Uh, much, much appreciated, Eileen. I hope you're having a good day. I think we got one a little bit earlier, and sorry if I haven't been watching. Scott D, thank you very much for your ongoing support. And Scott's got a question, said, whatever happened to the driver's points safety program strongly advocated and promoted about a year ago for drivers in Thailand? <clears throat> Scott, I think you know the answer to that. It didn't happen. If it did happen, it hasn't happened down here. Now, look, I'll admit that I mean, I drive around a lot. And the, some of the roads have got speed signs on them, but those speed signs are completely ignored. <clears throat> now we do have cameras. I assume some of them are speed cameras. And if they work, 
okay, but they don't seem to be able to map that information from the police, I assume, to the, to the Department of Land Transport, which has got all the registrations. They were talking about this five, six years ago, that they were having problems knitting the, the databases together so that when they capture a photo and the picture of a number plate, they could marry that with the information from the registration branches and send out a ticket. I would say there are not a day goes by when I'm not technically speeding or going over the speed limit, along with everybody else. Uh, I travel at a safe speed and I also always make sure I uh, travel safely according to the road conditions around me and the traffic around me. But uh, yes, yeah, Scott, I've never received a single traffic ticket. I don't know of anybody that has. So it seems that the system at this stage uh, still isn't working. And kudos to this cyclist who's taken his click, click, click shoes off. Best cyclist in town. Let's go to some other, I'm just trying to scroll with my fingers on the, uh, the M2 doesn't have scroll and screen. Um, okay, so this is a question without notice from Alexan, uh, Alexaniol. Hope I got that right. I know Pen, Pentac bowls, uh, Pent, pen, Pentank, Pentank, Petank. I think I got it right. Petank? A bowls is big in Thailand, but I don't see people play, not in Bangkok or on, on the islands. Do you have uh, any experience? Thanks from Austria. Patank, is, is that like bocce, where you throw the big ball and it, it's sort of like bowls but on the sand or something like that? Uh, I know I'm going to get a response, but uh, Alex, Alex Aniol, I'm sorry I've never seen anybody play Patank. I've heard of it. <clears throat> I think if somebody showed me a picture, I'd go, ah, oh, yes, of course. But it's not croquet, it's not cricket, it's not bocce, but might be similar to bocce. Anyway, sorry, I don't have an answer, but uh, I'm sure somebody below will. Good morning. All better late than never. Greetings from Davio City in the Philippines, from Frank in Thailand. Longest beach in the world is in Brazil, says Roy. That's 157 kilometres, which is what, 200 and... 40, uh, sorry, 157 miles, which is about 240 or so uh, kilometres. That is a long beach. We're talking about Thailand. I'm claiming we have the longest beach in Thailand right out in front of me. Prove me wrong. Uh, the automated message, hello, welcome on entering, hello, welcome on entering 7-Eleven, I find annoying and pointless. What are your small irritating things of everyday life in Thailand? This is from Graham. <clears throat> uh, yeah, when you go into a 7-Eleven in Thailand, it goes ding dong. And on some of the newer ones, they have got ding dong. Hello, welcome. Um, irritating and annoying. I've got bigger things to worry about, I have to say, Graham. But um, I suppose I just find it amusing uh, if um, I probably rather they didn't have it and rather somebody at the behind the desk said hello welcome or why are they saying it in English and not in Thai they should be saying sawadee ka or sawadee ka why are they saying hello welcome it doesn't really bother me that much Graham. what do I find irritating there are a lot of little annoyances at uh, this time of the year just hot um, and thank heavens for fans and air conditioning what else sort of bothers me look I don't know I don't sort of get as bothered by things as I used to be I think a bit more chilled as you get older you sort of think that uh, there's no use sweating the small things at the end of the day they really don't matter but I know, look, some people just get easily irritated. I appreciate that. But I get less irritated. I'm sure I'll think of something, Graham, and I'll, uh, I'll chime in when I can think about it. Coffee machines and blenders making noise time with hordes of cyclists arriving. Yes, thank you very much, Lang, for describing the obvious. Fun-sized media. What are three most beautiful uncrowded beaches in Thailand? 
The beaches on the west coast of Phuket are nice. <coughs> um, okay, Naihan Beach gets a bit crowded this time of the year, of course, and with the return of the other uh, tourists. The best, un- again, I'm going to have to, to question without notice. Probably not on the Gulf of Thailand. I'd say they'd all have to be here on the Andaman coast where the beaches are much better than on the Gulf of Thailand. As far as the uh, the water quality is concerned, <coughs> the general climate, and I think uh, the, the sort of view of the picturesque, um, you know, palm palm tree lined beaches. Yeah, we'd be calling, uh, we'd be talking about some of the islands uh, on this side of the uh, the Isthmus of Kra, the Malay Peninsula, down near Kolip, um, uh What's that beach? Uh, and Kokradan. That's got, I think it was named at one stage, the, the best, most picturesque beach in the world. But I'm sure, absolutely positive, that they'd all be on the Andaman coast. I wouldn't say that I've ever been or visited a beautiful beach in, um, in the Gulf of Thailand. Um, Koh Chang, it's got some nice beaches, but the beaches just aren't as good. The water quality is just not as good in the Gulf of Thailand as it here is, here is uh, as it is here on the Andaman coast. That's my two cents. I'll be interested to see what other people say. Fun-sized media. Morning off from Patia, Soy Five Beach Road from Mark W. Hello to you. Uh, clean air and cool. Maximum of thirty-five. That's from Frank in Thailand, who I don't think's in Thailand anymore. Uh, Nong Wa So, come to Isan and swim in a lake. Freshwater lake? Sounds like a good idea. Used to do that a lot in Australia. There was one lake I used to swim in, always had yabbies. Yabbies are a sort of a freshwater prawn, shrimp, and they'd always be nipping at my toes. Um, Wilco says, guest Taxon went to his hometown, Chiang Mai, to get some fresh air. Got a bit of a surprise when he got there. Gunnar Hopstead says the longest beach in Thailand is Bangkrut Beach in Prachup Kirikan and is 12 kilometers long. Gunnar, as I've said, the beach here in front of me is either 18 kilometers or nearly 35 kilometers long. I showed you on Google Maps, uh, minimum it's 18 kilometers long. If you're going to include that estuary, if you don't mind about that estuary, which closes over sometimes, then it's 34 kilometers long. Prove me wrong, but thanks for your input, Gunner, and for uh, Googling that. Bob Nigel, longest beach in the UK is Chisel Beach in Dorset. It's 28 kilometers. Um, I wonder if it's got sand on it. I went to one beach, the Brighton Beach in the UK. Oh, this is uh, 20 years ago. And it had um, pebbles. There wasn't sand at all. I didn't even call it a beach. Philippines is nice to be able to chit chat English with everyone. Now, what did I, what did I miss this? Frank in Thailand, a waxing lyrical about his time in the Philippines, seems to be enjoying himself. Um, his neck is okay. It's a miracle. We're talking about taxon, yes, it's a miracle, and we should thank whichever power has uh, been able to release him from the torment of pain and uh, whatever was ailing him. So yes, we bless whatever has assisted him. KJ, that's a mistake. I thought the pandemic would have thought the, that diversification from tourism would be more prudent. Yeah, I mean, they had, what, a couple of years to uh, sort out many aspects of the tourism industry. But um, the more we seek change, the more things seem to go back to the way they were. Uh, you know, particularly in Phuket with the taxi and the tuk-tuk mafia, they really could have done some good work over those t- uh, two years, but back to their old tricks and back to uh, a very, I would say, unsatisfying service uh, provided to tourists compared to other parts of Thailand, well, other cities in the world. Uh, any Swiss guys there to get rid of uh, the cyclist? Well... No, I'm not even going to talk any more about that. Uh, car manufacturing, I didn't know. Thought it's tourism all these years. Wow, what else? Thailand is famous for its economy. 
Uh, yeah, uh, car manufacturing uh, has been, and I think still is, the biggest driver of the uh, the Thai economy. One of the uh, the big car manufacturing uh, countries in uh, in Asia. Uh, I think maybe I'm going to get corrected for this. Uh, maybe the main car manufacturing center in Southeast Asia. Uh, now starting to become a big driver for EVs and EV batteries. There have been some uh, some new plants built over the past two years for some of the Chinese uh, EV brands that are now manufacturing their cars and some of their batteries here in Thailand. So that's going to add um, to uh, yeah Thailand's car manufacturing exports. Blah, blah, blah says that wasn't a neck brace talking about tax. And again, it was a turtleneck. Ah, turtleneck shirt. I've got one. I wear it every now and then. People laugh when I do. Old tax skin's main problem was always being that he's totally incapable of winding his neck in. Okay. Uh, Car Pear says, I don't wear masks because I'm tough. Wearing a face mask up in Chiang Mai is not going to do anything. I mean, the idea of wearing a face mask during COVID was not about what you're breathing in. It's about stopping you from breathing something out. So it's stopping those droplets of assumedly infected uh, dribble and stuff out of your mouth uh, exploding out into the, uh, the air. But as far as sucking things in, those uh, face masks don't do anything to stop the air getting through your nose and mouth. Phil L says, good morning, Tim. I'm in Da Nang, Vietnam for a couple of weeks. I'm not sure if you've been here, but it's a great place to visit. Yes, I have been to Da Nang. I live in Jom Tien, but the beach here is cleaner and better kept. <clears throat> yeah, great beaches in Da Nang. I found it was getting a bit overdeveloped when I was there. I drove uh, about 45 minutes south to a great little tourist town called Hoi An. I mean, that has also become very, very touristy as well. <clears throat> but when I was there, probably four years ago now, it was very charming. So I, I really thoroughly enjoyed uh, Hoi An. Um, yeah, I think it's become very touristy as well. But Da Nang, great place. Uh, but yeah, you sort of need to get away from the crowds to really enjoy it. Frank and Thailand. Thailand has the best hospitality sector, sector, low price, high service, especially compared to the Philippines. Cosmo says there was talk about a deal with Europe, free visa for a lot of countries. <clears throat> well, if you are from a European country, excuse me, I'll reach out for my glass, which is a long, long way away. Mm. 2024, I think. <clears throat> European people already get a free visa exemption. In other words, People from Europe can come to Thailand uh, with a backpack and their passport and just march into the country. They don't have to pre-apply for a visa and they get 30 days on arrival. This is most European countries. Now for people in Thailand traveling to Europe, this is what the, uh, the, the publicity has been about, but it doesn't really, it's not important to you unless you're Thai. Um, I think what uh, Seta has done during his last visit to Europe has secured, I'm not sure it's been confirmed yet, but a visa-free travel uh, for a Schengen visa to all European or EU countries. Now, I'll con confirm that probably on Monday's news program, but uh, it won't change the situation for people in European countries coming to Thailand who are already visa exempt for 30 days. The news is that the people in Thailand will be able to get reciprocal rights to uh, EU countries. <clears throat> Trevor Cunningham says Vietnam will be better va value if all visa changes are included for longer stays than 30 days. Well, visa situation in Vietnam is quite fluid. Long stays uh, visas in uh, Vietnam are hard to come by and they seem to change the rules every five minutes. But uh, yeah, we will keep an eye on that. The new visa deal with Europe will come after their election, hopefully soon. That's uh, from Alpha Bravo. I'm a 25M retired expat. I love Thailand. 25 month, so two and a bit years. I don't know if I'm correct. Fun-sized media is uh, <clears throat> getting in amongst it and saying Phuket 
is a Russian province. Yes, there are more Russian people there than in the past. But it's, it's not like it's been taken over by them. They still, uh, even if you add up all of the Russian expats, they still are only way, way less than 4 or 5% of the total population. Because the highest number of any nationality in Phuket are Thais. There's about, I think, 400 to 450,000 of them because they need them to, uh, to run the hospitality sector in Phuket. Phuket is all about tourism, for sure. And there are currently plenty of Russian tourists and some new Russian expats there. But um, I haven't done the numbers, I haven't checked the numbers recently, but I would guess that over the past couple of months, the uh, highest number of visitors would have come from China and, uh, and not Russia. But it's, it's China and Russia that are number one and two. Uh, in Phuket at the moment. Uh, yeah. But look, people come and go. Uh, tourist trends come and go. This trend with a lot of Russians in Thailand is pretty much based around a geopolitical situation uh, which nobody really predicted. I suppose they did. But uh, yeah, once things uh, change with that geopolitical situation, the, the war, following the invasion of Russia into Ukraine, once that dies down or it stops or it finishes or however it uh, ends up, that situation may change. A lot of those Russian people may return back to Russia. So it's an artificial uh, sort of acceleration of one particular nationality in Phuket at the moment. Uh, it is quite artificial. Vince Majestic says, I always found Thailand very friendly, had no problems whatsoever. Uh, Jack Daniels, where is Mr. Ross? I don't know, he's probably at home in bed for all I know. I don't even know why you're asking. Uh, Chiang Mai is having the worst air quality anywhere in the world at the moment, says Roy Go. Yeah, two days in a row, and it's been up there in the top 10 quite a lot over the past month. The most air polluted city in the world. It's not a proud um, accomplishment. Lang F. Tan, yes, a longer visa stay for tourists and longer or short-term residents. Easy to apply and extend visas would help in welcoming all foreign incomers. Um, yeah, I would suggest it's still pretty easy in Thailand to, uh, to get a visa. I'm not sure why people keep on whinging about it. Things really haven't changed that much. Um, I think in places like Phuket, the, the getting the extensions it's just made a little bit more complex at the moment just by the fact that they've only got the three immigration officers and obviously they're a lot busier than they used to be. But the rules are really much the same and the costs at the moment, as long as you're not from New Zealand, have remained the same for quite a long time. And we'll keep an eye on that, but um, yeah, I'm not sure why people keep on complaining about it because the situation really hasn't changed very much. Just uh, scrolling down, uh, fun size media, Chiang Mai is beautiful in November. Yes, it is for eight months of the year. Very pleasant place to go. Um, Robbie says that level of pollution, talking about Chiang Mai, uh, has to have health implications. There's no doubt about that. Your Thai pronunciation is getting better and better, Tim. Thanks you, thank you, Vince. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, I'm still catching up on all these messages. Thank you all for dropping in. Uh, thank you again, Eileen and Scott, for your super chats. Um, I'm very humbled by it. It'll go a little way to pay for the uh, the new Mac. And if you just tuned in, I bought a new MacBook Air M2 in a midnight colour, which during the daytime almost looks like a charcoal black, but at night time takes on a bit of a bluish hue. Uh, it's very, very sexy. I like it. Um, Frank Hagen says, Tim, that is an omnidirectional mic. It's going to pick up everything going on around. You need to switch back to your old radio mic. Look, Frank, I'm very well, I'm very aware. This is a bit of an experiment today. I'm going to have a listen back and uh, decide whether we're going to plug another mic in, which I can do. And I have bought another little mic, smaller than the big one, because I'm trying it, because that is a very heavy mic. I mean, when I put it in my bag, along with the iPad and the iMac and everything, the iMac, the MacBook, it's by far heavier than anything else. So I am getting a smaller directional mic. 
that uh, won't take as much room in my bag and won't take as much uh, visual space. So we'll try that next week as well. Um, but yes, it's an omnidirectional mic and um, well, not really that omni because uh, of course it's facing me and it can't record anything behind the computer. So it's partially directional, but not half as directional as the old mic I used to have. Jack Daniel says, nice shirt, Tim. Thank you very much. One of my favorites. This is actually in a cotton fabric. It's not uh, the usual polyester or polyester cotton mix. Uh, so it's quite a, a cool shirt, apart from being a cool shirt. It's actually quite cool. Did Tim get the Sir Mix A Lot reference? Sir Mix A Lot. GD, I'm sorry I missed your comment. Uh, racing through here, I, I did miss miss your comment. Um, taxis charge 500 baht to go anywhere and cost a million times. So yeah, I don't think the taxi situation is any better in Kosamui uh, compared to Phuket, but uh, you're probably the ones who have uh, more experience with that, so I'd be interested to hear your comments. Why is Thailand closing down bank accounts for the Russian people? This is from Fro Medi. I think uh, money banking generally in Thailand for Russian people has been complex uh, ever since they started coming back uh, around about 18 months ago. Uh, depending on the sanctions, uh, it, it has been a problem for, for some Russians to get hold of cash. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe Thailand's just uh, crumbling under some sort of pressure to apply certain sanctions. But uh, I know I've had a couple of Russian customers and uh, they have had problems uh, accessing their cash. Most of them may be sort of dragging money out of ATMs all the time. Um, okay, what else have we got here? Fun Size Media, a mic is definitely needed. Thank you very much, Fun Size Media. Right on the storm, Kyushu. Uh, whoever said, I like big beaches and I cannot lie. Brilliant and funny. Don't think Tim knows that song. I probably do know the song, but I'm not really good at remembering lyrics. Um, Dr. Moynihan, thank you for these updates. Uh, we're just ready, to, just ready to air Asia from the Sala NST to Bangkok and on to Oregon, USA on Monday. Why oh, you didn't get up to Turtle Beach? What a shame. But uh, Dr. Moynihan, please come to Turtle Beach next time. I've got three lovely beach houses which, by the way, there's a link in the description of this video. Oh dear, I'll have to check on that. So, uh, a few others, and we're nearly up to an hour. Um, Robbie says, question, saw a YouTube review of the Russia Resort on Koh Russia Yai Island on the southern tip of Phuket. Has anyone been? Looks amazing. The Russia. <clears throat> oh yeah, um, that's a great resort. It's been around for a long time. And it's uh, got many awards and accolades over the year. Um, on the yeah, it's down the the southern tip. There's uh, two or three. There's Kot Russia Yai and there's Kot Russia Noi, big and small. So it's on the big one. And uh, there's not many other resort uh, alternatives on Kot Russia Yai. But um, yeah, Russia has always. They've been very good on social media. They've invited me a number of times to go and have a freebie. Um, I don't basically do freebies these days, but um, uh, yeah, I, I haven't actually been there, but they do seem to get uh, a lot of attention. They obviously do their social media and PR very, very well. Comment from Bart SPL, <clears throat> and he says, there are two Farangs in Patia who pinched an unsuspecting girl's rear, supposedly no right to do that, but the girls on Soy 6 can grab you wherever they want while you walk past. What happens in Patia stays in Patia. Um, yeah, look, I mean, if you're going to sort of get involved in all the shenanigans up there, uh, I suppose you're going to get what you, uh, what you deserve. Um, yeah, I mean, if you've got a problem with girls grabbing you in Patia, then I'm not sure why you're going there in the first place. I think that's part of the shtick of what they do. And there is a truck going past which has got half the um, marquees, the big tents that were placed. Yes, thank you. Nice to see you too. 
So yeah, they're slowly still clearing up Turtle Beach a week after the festival's finished. But yeah, look, Bart, SPL, um, if you're sort of crying foul about that, we'll go to the police and see if they're going to do something about it. But yeah, I mean, I don't think generally it's nice for men to grab at girls. And um, yeah, the girls in some of those locations will have a grab at you. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm not really sure what to say about that. Toby Price has a question. Why can't the Phuket governor intervene with a taxi mafia? Oh, Toby, Toby, Toby. So they use their meter. It seems to be an easy issue to fix. Must be a lot of uh, under the table stuff going on, Toby. We've had two or three governments in Thailand that have tried to tackle the, uh, the taxi mafia. We've had two military coups that have tried to tackle the taxi mafia. We've had the army go in and try and calm down the taxi mafia. All these things have failed because uh, it's big. It's a huge industry. It makes billions of baht every year. And it's a cabal and it's well organized and it's extremely powerful. And yeah, there are probably brown paper bags which are being paid to the right people. But it's the situation in Phuket. And if you don't like it, don't come to Phuket because you will be disappointed uh, with the, uh, the taxis there. They are expensive, it's just the way it is. Uh, so yeah, the governor, uh, bless him, he won't do anything about it. It's not as if he's on the payroll. He's um, just, uh, he would have to have the backing of the, the Thai army, the police, it's just not gonna happen, and the government to be able to go in and do anything about it. It's a shame, really, uh, it's a shame. And the worst shame is that those taxi drivers are not doing themselves any good. They're giving people a bad first impression when they get, get here. And sadly, it's usually the last impression that they have when they leave Thailand or leave Phuket as well. Patonk is like Boche. Thank you very much, Trent Brown. Patonk is played on in, in southern France. It's the French version of Boche. Am I saying it right, Boche? I hope I am. Patonk, so that's how it's pronounced. Uh, I've been reread as Peter Piper picked a pack, pack of pickled peppers. Thank you very much. A few more, and then we'll go. Never seen Patonk in Thailand, says old expat. I've seen Boche uh, played uh, quite a few places. It could have been Patonk and I didn't know. Definitely more Russians in Pattaya too, says Roy Goad. Uh, Bop Nigel, Patonk means anchored feet. It's French, where you throw metal balls at a jack ball, the closest win. So it's like lawn bowls, but um, it's played uh, not on a green where you bowl along the green. It's uh, sort of almost throw it underarm. Uh, are condo rents in Patong stabilised or keep going up exponentially? This is from Larry. Yeah, look, uh, condo and rental prices generally in Phuket are crazy at the moment. There were two years, obviously, during COVID when the prices were way, way down. And from that way, way down to where it is now has sort of been, uh, shows that it's, it's, it's not quite as bad if you compare 2019 rental prices to now. The difference isn't quite as bad. But yes, you're paying really high prices. Phuket's one of those areas in Thailand where it's... Um, very exposed to the tourists coming or the tourists not coming the prices go up and down along with no, not the taxi prices uh, along with the uh, the demand so it's one of those places where depending on whether it's busy or it's not busy the prices for many services and things like rentals could uh, could change uh, not defending the pm says what ranch but for a tie saving face is paramount the neck brace may be in his lap just for the picture. Fairly good comment. And uh, Dark Cloud says, first time in Bangkok for four years, and the traffic seems worse than I remember trying to get anywhere around the city. Well, yeah, that's why we've got excellent public transport in uh, Bangkok. I used to get around pretty much exclusively for the one or two kilometer hops uh, on the motorbike taxis. I used them every day without a problem make a good decision uh, make sure you wear a bike helmet make sure the driver appears not under the influence of anything in particular 
But uh, I didn't have any problems with the motorbike taxis at all. I mean, they're professionals. They do it hundreds of times a day. And, of course, you've got the BTS, the MRT. If you want to take a, a, a normal taxi or get in your own car, well, yeah, you're in amongst uh, some of the worst traffic in a big Asian city. A lot of comments today. I'm just not getting <coughs> through them. Tim loves driving in Phuket. No, I don't. I hate driving in Phuket. Um, Vince Majestic, there's a beautiful beach right near the airport with restaurants and cafes spread out on the sand. Can't remember its name. If you're talking about Phuket, that's Nyang Beach. And it's a lovely beach indeed. Yeah, it, it's, it's a nice enough beach, yes. And it's about five minutes from the Phuket airport. Uh, don't agree, even the beach on Kolan was crystal clear when I last went there recently, says Roy Goad. Yeah, but uh, look, Kolan, even on its best day, the beaches in the Gulf of Thailand aren't a patch on the beaches here on the Andaman Sea. Just because of the water quality is so much higher here, because uh, the water circulates better, it doesn't have the pollution pumped into it that uh, the Gulf of Thailand does. So, uh, yeah. It's always going to have better water quality. Uh, Lewis Beck says it's one of those things we all go through. First, there's the honeymoon period. Then comes everything just pisses you off from tuk-tuks to Thai politics. Finally, acceptance. I think I'm at that acceptance level. I've never really been a whinger about Thailand. I mean, I sometimes joke about various issues, but I love living in Thailand. Uh, I'm very happy here. I hope to be able to stay here. Phuket Immigration, I'm in their hands. Pang A Immigration now. Um, yeah, I, I want to stay here. And all the thousand little annoyances, when you add them all together, don't outweigh the big things like the climate, the cost of living, the um, culinary experiences. I mean, you can get really good food here. Of course, a lot of really good Thai food, uh, cost of living, uh, internet, my business, uh, a lot of it revolves on good, reliable, fast, cheap internet. We get it here in spades. The connectivity uh, and the internet, I think, is some of the best, I'm going out on a limb here, in the world. The internet is really excellent. Um, yeah, look, I, all those big things. Healthcare, the quality of healthcare here is excellent. If you go to a private hospital, you're going to pay for it. You're probably going to need private health insurance. Okay, so I needed private health insurance back in my home country. Well, I didn't need it, but you'd be crazy not to have it. <clears throat> um, and the public health system is also um, the public health system is also very good for ties. Um, okay, so that's it. Um, I think we've been going for an hour and eight minutes. I appreciate your participation in the program. <clears throat> the voice is going. I will be back tomorrow with Steve, Mr. Steve Ross. Of course, he'll be doing most of the talking on grumpy old men. Always got fascinating stories and uh, a lot to say. But from Chip Fair, Lele, here on uh, the longest beach in Thailand. Thanks for watching. Have a great Saturday. We'll see you next time.